So you ask the person, why are you so unhappy? Why are you so frustrated? Why are you so resentful? The moment you ask that, their brain is going to associate that emotion to a past event. To a memory. To Experience. a memory. Yeah. That's because they have nothing to look forward to in their future. So if you're not being defined by a vision of the future, it just means to me that you're more in love with your past mm. than you are with the future. So how do you teach people to believe in a future that they can't see or experience with their senses yet, but they've thought about enough times in their mind that their brain has literally changed to look like the event has already occurred? The latest research in neuroscience says that's absolutely possible. Mm. We know that. And how do you teach a person to select a new possibility in their future and begin to emotionally embrace that future before it's made manifest? To such a degree that their body is their unconscious mind is believing it's living in that future reality in the present mm. moment and they're signaling new genes and new ways ahead of the environment now, till their body begins to change to look like the event has already occurred. We've proven that that's possible. Now think about this. So the more you think about your desired future, the joy, the gratitude, the, uh, the feelings you want to have that are more positive, the more you think about it as, it's, as a future thing happening, the more your body shifts now. Exactly. So your body is believing it's living in that future reality now. in the present moment. Now think about this. The stronger the emotion you feel from some condition in your life, the more altered you feel inside of you, the more you narrow your focus on the cause and the brain freezes an image and takes a snapshot. And that memory now is embossed in the brain. It's branded in there. So then people think neurologically within the circuits of those past experiences and they feel chemically within the boundaries of those emotions. And the stronger the betrayal, the stronger the trauma, the more the body's living in the past, right? Crazy. So then, so how do you reverse that? So now, if you truly got passionate about a future, we've all done this. You get a wild idea in your mind and uh -huh. you start holding on to that vision and you're preoccupied with it. All of a sudden, the thought in your mind becomes the experience and you start feeling the, the energy of the future. Yeah. Now, the stronger the emotion you feel from that vision, the more you're gonna pay attention to the picture in your mind and now you're remembering your future. And vice and, versa, the stronger you pay attention to the feeling of the past pain, you're gonna create the pain in this moment. Exactly. So then, so it requires a coherent brain mm -hmm. and we now know that there's a formula for that and we've got beautiful research to show that people can do it. They just have to practice. And it requires a coherent heart because resentment, frustration, impatience creates a very incoherent heart. <laughs> yeah. And when that heart becomes incoherent, you stop trusting yourself. There's no energy there. You, get, you stop trusting in your future. Wow. So then if there's physical evidence in your brain and body, physical evidence to look like the event has already occurred, it's quite possible you'll be thinking neurologically within the circuits of your future and you'll begin to feel chemically within the boundaries of that emotion of your future mm -hmm. and how you think and how you feel is your state of being. And now your state of being is living in the future instead of the past. Now, the moment you disconnect from the emotion of your future because of traffic or some coworker or your ex or whatever people come up with, now you're back to the energy of your past. Oh. And now you're gonna start looking for it, analyzing why hasn't it happened. Well, if you're feeling the emotion of your future, why would you look for it? Because you would feel like it already happened and that mm. is the place where the magic happens. So then you can't just do this, get up and then return back to your old state of being. You gotta maintain that modified state How of mind. How do you maintain it that's, when, when that's life practice. happens? Well, let me finish. If I punch it, you in the face right now. How do you maintain <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, of course. I mean, we all take blows in our lives yeah. and, and we all react emotionally. But the question is, how long are you going to react? Right, right. I'll so see. then if you can't mediate and regulate your emotional mm -hmm. reactions and those emotions linger for days. That's a mood. Years for some people. Mood. And then a months, temperament, years, personality trait. So then the person's personality is literally based on the past. But Crazy. they don't know that because they're doing it over and over again and it becomes a subconscious program. So now, if it requires a coherent brain and a coherent heart, then we have to train people uh -huh. how to self-regulate. So we've done thousands and thousands of measurements. We've partnered with the HeartMath Institute. 
to teach people how to create and sustain heart coherence. How do we do it? Well, besides going to your workshop, what's a simplified version? I'm sure it takes more time than... Well, it really doesn't. It really doesn't. It just requires getting still, closing your eyes, putting your attention on your heart, changing your breath so that you move into the present moment. And when you slow your breathing down, you slow your brain waves down. When you slow your brain waves down, now you're accessing your autonomic nervous system. So then you train a person how to open their heart and feel an elevated emotion. And it takes a little practice. And just like a flower that, that takes time to bloom, mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. takes a little bit of time. But if mm -hmm. you work in trading the resentment, the frustration or the impatience for gratitude, appreciation and thankfulness, and you keep at it, there'll come a moment where that system switches on and now you're feeling grateful for no reason at all. Right. That's, that's not a bad <laughs> thing because gratitude, the emotional signature of gratitude means something's happening to you something has happened to you, yeah. you're receiving something or you just received something. So your body then, when you're feeling gratitude, is in the perfect state of receiving. Mm -hmm. So then that means then you'll accept, believe and surrender to the thoughts equal to the emotional state of gratitude. If you're living in resentment, you're living in fear, you're living in, in, in patience, you could say I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm healthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm with all you want and that thought's gonna stop right at the brainstem and never make its way to the body because the body is not feeling or because why because you're feeling resentment uh -huh. and that thought isn't the, that thought is not consistent with the emotion of resentment resentment has a different set of thoughts right in other words once you start opening your heart it begins to move into coherence it begins to produce a measurable magnetic field up to three meters wide now that's frequency, that's energy. And all that energy, that frequency carries information, carries an intent. So then when you're feeling gratitude and your heart is open, you're broadcasting energy into the field. A now, frequency. A yeah. frequency. You lay the intent of the thought of your health or your wealth. That frequency can carry the thought of your wealth. It can mm. carry the thought of your health. If you're suffering, you can't, the suffering does not carry, that energy does not carry the thought of your wealth. It carries a different set of thoughts. So then, so then we're teaching people how to self-regulate because if you're going to believe in that future that you're imagining with all of your heart, it better be open and activated right, right. and you better know how to self-regulate and you have to know the moment you disconnect from the energy of your future because of some circumstance in your life and you lose that feeling, if you're practicing it on a daily basis with your eyes closed, then the next level is to be able to open your eyes and do it right in the moment and be able to self-regulate and change the, the frustration from some experience in your life back to the energy of your future. Now, that requires great awareness and great effort. We have evidence that people can sustain it for 45 minutes to an hour. It's a skill now. They know that they know how to do it. So now they have brain coherence and heart coherence. Well, once the heart begins to become orderly and coherent, it acts as an amplifier and it drives energy to the brain. So now the brain is getting more energy once the heart is open and then you're thinking a different set of thoughts. Imagine this field of information, this, this, this intelligence that lives within you and I that's governing everything material in this world. It's a self-organizing intelligence you have access to it so you better get present with it mm -hmm. as well as you can get present with anything else and just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I'm starting to realize how conditioned we are into believing how limited we are mm -hmm. and as you start peeling those layers away and you break through those beliefs, those self-limiting thoughts and emotions on the other side of that is where the miraculous happens so you gotta be willing to be in that place of discomfort long enough to reorganize order and mm. begin to create more coherence. And then all of a sudden, you get this recalibration that goes on in the brain and body. And then the extent of that is that the ultimate thing is you start to see feedback in your life, those synchronicities, those coincidences, mm. those opportunities, you're scratching your head going, everything's falling into place. Yeah, I'm in the right place at the Everything right time. Everything I think about just comes to me. Because your energy is synchronized. Yeah. It's, you, look, I mean, when you have coherence in the brain and heart, you have a laser of energy and it could read information much better. You're living in stress and your brain is shifting its attention from one person to another problem, to another thing, to another uh, place to go. 
Each one of those things, there's an assignment of neurological networks in the brain. So the arousal of the stress hormones drives the brain into this high frequency, and you're trying to control and predict everything in your life. And those, your brain circuits are firing like a, like a lightning storm in the clouds. When your brain's incoherent, you're incoherent. And, and you, can't, you don't have a signal. You're, you, you don't have a Wi-Fi signal. You're not connected to the field. How could, you, how could you connect to energy and information if your signal hasn't become orderly? So that when people synchronize their energy into coherence, they can synchronize to a possibility in the future. And the synchronicities that are feedback from the environment are just a reflection of your energy. And that's the universe saying, follow the breadcrumbs, do it again, follow it again, do it again. And now all of a sudden the person's not waking up in the morning like, oh, Gonna meditate now to create my future. They're, they're kind of going like, I'm getting out of bed because I don't want the magic to end, right? They want to they want to sustain that state so that the old reality that they've lived in begins to transform into something new. And because there's no longer a vibrational match with everyone and everything in their past and present reality, there's a vibrational match to their future, and now their future is starting to give them signals.